the Sultan is back. He created a wave in astrology that was never seen before on something as simple as Panchanga and in that Karana. These videos on Karana have created us to think how deep astrology can be. What we don't know. Honestly, I don't mind admitting I know nothing about astrology. And if you're honest to yourself after seeing that video, you would accept it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome once again the Sultan of Astrology, Mr. Vishti Larson. Hi, Vishti. Namaste. 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 Thank you so much for coming to the show. Sultan title. <laughs> well, Sultan. It's my pleasure, Sunil. It's my pleasure to be back and, and, and lecturing, teaching with you. Always a pleasure. Uh, you always inspire me to you know, go, go a bit above and beyond when it comes to teaching. Thank yes. you. I even have to catch myself from speaking secrets with you. <laughs> no, no, no. We want secrets. We want secrets. Hey, hey I don't want to die. You, you know, I don't want to die knowing that, hey, I could have got this knowledge from you. You know, or I'm a viewer. I'm a viewer. That, hey, Mr. Vishti Larson, we did not give him the opportunity to open his heart out and teach from his heart. So don't, don't stop sharing secrets. We want it all. At least, the least of things you will do is, what has happened on YouTube is so many fluffy videos are coming. You are showing us what in-depth astrology can do. And my hats off, of course, and pranam to our Guruji, uh, Sanjay Rajji. So thank you so much, Vishti, for coming once again. You know, And today, it's going to be Tithi of Panchanga and relationships. I, I don't know anything. I never heard something like that. Please go ahead, Vishti. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Sunil. Um, yes. Um, Panchanga and Titi. Yes. Now, uh, before we, we uh, enter this topic fully, um, it's, it's important to understand how, uh, how when we approach astrology, th uh, you're going to start asking when you learn some of the techniques that I'm going to show today, um, how broad can astrology B, when we have to use it on a daily basis to help people and read people's charts. Now, you can hope that after this life, you're going to be sitting with Brigu Rishi in, in Satyaloka, all right? And talk to him about Jyotish, or rather, hope that he spills the beans on just a little bit, all right? That would be very nice. After this life, we are all hoping, astrologers, that we can continue doing Jyotish. Right. Truth be told, the, some of the past, li or sorry, last end life theories and after life theories are. We go where we have always gone in this life. If we've been doing Jyotish every day of our life, we will go and do more Jyotish. And then you decide which Rishis you're going to talk to about it. Okay? Yeah. Brigu Rishi is the one you want to talk to. All right? Yeah. The author, the real author of this. And, uh, and uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat and say you'd only need to know a certain amount of principles to read Jyotish. But we have to accept that life is very broad. And, uh, and uh, if, we, if there is something, an aspect of life that should or can be depicted, which you may not be able to normally depict with the regular, what we call Rashi Chat Navamsha, or any chakras, vargas or whatnot, understand there are more principles. There are many, many, many principles. And you, you, we as astrologers try to specialize ourselves in one field, one, maybe two fields, and use this as our base. We usually check our charts and get to know what it is we need to specialize in, <laughs> what clients will come to us. But the point is, the, it, Jyotish is broad. And trying, specializing in one field and making yourself excellent in one field is not demeaning Jyotish. It just means that you can use that as your, you could call it springboard, to learn other fields as well and accommodate them in your, in your learning, in your understanding and also practice. Uh, and uh, Titi is uh, all about relationships. Karana, which I spoke of earlier, I did not complete Karana. There is a lot that. more of Karana. I know that. I know that. I Karana. It, and it, it's, it is really a big topic. Um, and some feedback came on this. Lovely feedback. Some questions came. I tried to answer a little bit of that, pointing in the right direction. 
this topic of titi that I'm going to speak on today are parts that I have not spoken of before. Wow. Wow. That to say, I have spoken a lot about titi before. And uh, this, so I'm, I'm fulfilling a need which is, which is there with my own students and also with the public who have not seen much of my work on this topic. That's great. Uh, I have given a very long lecture on Titi when I was in Serbia about two years back. Oh. And uh, that, long, that long lecture is available uh, at my website, ramaedu.com. It is available and it's very long and it gets into many, many basic concepts. But what I did not teach there is what I'm going to teach today. Wow. Okay. Wow. Because it's a very big topic. Karana is also very big. And uh, some people are going to notice that the way I'm going to approach the tipi is only from one singular aspect, just one aspect, but how much we can do with that one aspect is amazing. Okay. So with that, I'm going to allow people to see the slides now, the topic okay. of tipi. I'm just going to click a few buttons here. One second. If I may, if I may just request that lecture of yours, if you can yes. just send me the link, I would paste I'll, it below the video. So people can do. download that video or that lecture also and that's the deal. Learn that's in depth. Excellent. So here we are. Here's the first slide. Now, this is my fourth draft of the slides. <laughs> I, I, it, it became uh, some, some more than 30 slides, almost 40 slides. And I had to reduce it because I thought we wouldn't have time. And I was maybe repeating myself too much. I know Sunil hates when I say these things. Um, but it was, but please bear in mind, I will try to touch upon every aspect that I had left, that I've left out in this lecture, which, which I do find uh, are useful parts. But you will see why it is big when we just talk of this one singular concept. Okay. So here's the first page and uh, let's move straight away to the topic on the next slide. Mm -hmm. And it is, what we always have to start with, the calculations. Remember, this is where you pause and check this to do something right, wrong, or hide something. <laughs> what is Titi and the calculation? And um, I'm not starting with speaking on the topic of Panchanga at this rate, because I hope people will go back to the previous lecture on Karana and see the introduction I did on Karana and Panchanga in general. Um, what I wanted to add to this uh, lecture is some minuscule aspects of the Panchanga just before we enter the calculation. Namely, where does Panchanga preside in the creation of things? Mm. What is it? Okay. And at this stage, we start having to enter the part of Jyotish, which is called Vedanga Jyotish. There's no point in doing Jyotish unless it's going to be another temporary study. It's no point. Okay, then at one point, Jyotish does not become useful anymore. Yeah. If it, all, it is only a study which one day will use its value because you, of your understanding, level of life, of, of consciousness, then Jyotish is not useful. It is not part of Veda. Correct. It, because it's part of the Veda, Vedanga, it's called a Vedanga, Jyotish. Because it is part of the Veda, therefore, it finds relevance always. So how does it find its relevance always? That's a very important question. It cannot find its relevance if you're going to keep looking to see what color car you're going to get. All right? Even the topic of longevity, people say, if you're going to die, you're going to die. What can you do about it? All right? Some people say, no, we can help people with the longevity, live longer. For what purpose should we do so? Because mm -hmm. that is one of the highest topics, most important topics of Jyotish, knowing your longevity. All right? And also working with your longevity. You know, it is to understand how much time do you have to reach God? All right. You have spelled it out, spelled it out, perfectly spelled it out. Exactly. This is what we are taught in a tradition. How much time do we have to reach God? All right. Being humble enough to know this is the amount of time I have. Can I exceed that time? Mm -hmm. Furthermore. Something very basic. I had a, this is a very recent example I'll share. A client came to me and asked, mm -hmm. what's uh, actually, I'm sorry, not a client, actually a colleague, colleague, and asked, what's going on? 
They are very unhappy with their life because they were very busy. They did many pujas, many mantras, and of late they had increased that significantly. But their life seemed to be going nowhere. In mm. fact, to that extent that they were fighting to, you know, make a living. And of course, in that state, you would ask your, uh, an astrologer or ask somebody, what's happening? How can it be that life is at this stage? You have done, one has done so much, mantra, puja, whatnot. What's going on? And then the astrologer enters from the Vedanga topic, the Vedanga Jyotisha has to emerge here. Mm -hmm. And, or some people say Raj Jyotish, because you're guiding somebody's head, okay? Not a politician, but as guiding somebody's life. And you, the astrologer draws a prashna, deva prashna. Mm -hmm. And in that, it was showing that the person had delayed the results of their good fruits, good pujas. Because eight months back from the prashna date, the chart showed that they had changed their Ganesh mantra. And Ganesh was blocking the results of every other prayer in the, in that they were doing because the mantra was forgotten or stopped eight months back. Oh my gosh. It showed very clear. This is what this is what is the problem in the chart. And because of that, there's Deva Badaka, Deva Mantra Badaka. And the mantra was for Ganesh. And so all I asked was, were you performing a mantra eight months back for Ganesh that you stopped? And the person confirmed, yes. They had stopped and started another mantra. Okay. I asked, well, since then, has the person seen that there's been more delays in the life? Yes, exactly. And then you ask, ask them, continue with the mantra, which was started eight months, which were ended eight months ago, so that the fruits of the mantra could come. And also tell when exactly the fruits are expected in the future because of this. Okay. 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 Now, that is Jyotish. That, right? Yeah. That is Jyotish. That is Jyotish. Okay. Where you are actually interacting as, a, as what we call a medium between you, the client, and God. And God. The choirist and God. That is real Jyotish at that level. Yeah. When we reach that, Jyotish always finds its usefulness in every loka that we abide in. Yeah. That is where we, what we're looking at. What is Titi in this concept? Which loka are we residing in when we learn of Titi? Because the impact of karma works at various levels. You can call it chakras. You can call it lokas. They intermingle anyway. Mm -hmm. Whether you when you're mixing the microcosm and macrocosm, you get this emergence between loka, seven lokas that are above us, and the seven chakras which are in our body. They, they merge at this level. And where does titi reside? We have three manifest lokas. Bur, Bhuva, Swa. And we are rising to move above these through the Gayatri mantra. Om, Bhur, Bhuva, Swa. And then the rest of the Gayatri. All right? That is why the Gayatri has Burbhuva Swayam. And it is added by the Brahmins so that we can rise above the three lokas. Because these are the three manifest lokas. Some people use slightly different terminology for this. But we call it, in my tradition, we say these are manifest. We can see this earth, we can see the sky, we can see the stars, which are the backdrop. Wherever you are in this galaxy, it will be where you are, what is immediately around you, the galaxy, Bhuva Loka. And then there's the Swarga, which is the backdrop of stars. There will always be that. And then we talk of what is beyond the stars, what is beyond that backdrop. That is what is unmanifest, because beyond that, there's nothing else. There's nothing manifest. Okay? And there, in the Vedic concept, beyond these three lokas, there are four above. Okay. Four lokas above. So it becomes Saptaloka. It becomes Saptaloka. And there is a void between the three and four. Okay. And this void, that is where the elements, tattva, are eternal. They are not mixing. They mix in the three loka lower, below here. That's where they mix. Okay? Above, they are not mixing. There's no mixing up there. The tattva are not mixing, which is why you are, you are born and dying in these three lokas. Okay. Because the tattva is mixed to create a body. But in the higher lokas, there's no death. Okay. That is why everybody wants to be born on Bhuloka so that they can experience a lifetime where there's a chance of beginning and ending. In the other Lokas, everything is eternal. Mm -hmm. At least until those Lokas are dissolved. But there's no death. So, the Panchanga, 
works at the elemental tattva level. Between these three and four lokas, that is where they are created. It's a void. That void. Yes, and there's an ocean there, a huge ocean, we say. It's depicted like that, which crossing is very difficult. This panchanga is working at that level, mm -hmm. okay? where the elements are not mixing. Mm -hmm. And when there is what we call a panchanga dosha, we have to work at an elemental level to solve it. That is why it's all about elements. Agni, Prithvi, Jala, etc. It's all about elements. Titti is associated with Jala Tattva. So our entire Jala, our entire water system is governed by this. That's why in the last lecture I was speaking of that Titti is all about emotions. It can also be longevity. It could also be relationships. Everything that's affecting the water in our system. Okay? Because that water has now come down here to earth. That means it has to mix. So eventually there'll be some dosha. It cannot be completely perfect. Mm -hmm. So that is where Panchanga is working. So it's a very high level. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. It means there is what we call an integral problem in our birth when there is a Panchanga dosha. Because it was not created because of a past life. Because the past life was like your Buloka, right? Yeah. Yes. And then in between we went to a higher loka, but karma is not really coming from there. All right. And then we were reborn and then we created more karmas or overcame the last ones. But if you have an integral problem, that means you have, let's say when it comes to Titi, you have a wrong understanding of what water is, or let's use a more appropriate term. You have a wrong understanding of what is good or bad emotion. Mm -hmm. There's an integral problem there. Okay. Then it in fact affects your entire emotional life in this life. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is what, what we're doing when we look at Titi. That is why we consider it so important. It is more, almost over, uh, it's almost overemphasizing one aspect of life mm -hmm. instead of allowing the chart to work within the karmas that it, it decides. That mm -hmm. once we reach the chart, I mean, as soon as we come from mm -hmm. that, that void, and we come to Swargaloka, the nakshatras are there. Mm -hmm. okay. And the rashas therefore arise when the mi mixing between Swarga and Bhuvaloka arises. In Bhuvaloka itself are the planets. Okay. So Panchanga is higher than the planets. It's higher than the nakshatras. Hmm? Okay. Very interesting, right? The first emergence of this, this soul into this world is through swarga loka the nakshatras so nakshatra is very important but before that there are the other elements which are being created mm -hmm. okay. all right all right advanced stuff but we but i need to make this push for people to appreciate where what we're doing when we look at jyotish from this perspective right mm -hmm. very right. high all right all right okay. so let me just uh, say a bit about this slide here Mm -hmm. So this is the calculation, and I've given an example of how to calculate the titi. Mm -hmm. I did this some time ago, this page. <laughs> so if I made a mistake, you can correct it. It's perfectly fine. It should be right, however. Maybe there's a secret here or there. I don't know. I can't remember at this stage. But it should be pristine in, matter, in the matter of its, of its calculation. And uh, the titi name is given here. There are uh, 15, you could call 16, uh, just separate titis. Um, and they spread out over a period of uh, 30 days. Uh, basically, uh, 14 titis will uh, carry, uh, I'm sorry, I should use the term, 28 titis will carry the same name. Pratipad is the first one. Dvitiya is the second one. And basically, these are numbers. Pratipad means the first one. Dvitiya means the second one. Tritiya is the third one. Chaturthi is the fourth one. And then set, etc. Then... Depending on whether it's the whether we have uh, started in the bright fortnight, that means the waxing fortnight, which starts with the new moon and ends with the full moon, or whether we're in the waning phase, which uh, which ends with the new moon. Depending on that, we call the new moon and full moon by different names. The full moon is called Purnima, and the new moon is called Amavasya. All right. But the remaining others have different, they have the same names. Right. First, second, third, fourth, until 14th. The 15th can be the last 
day of the waxing phase, which is full moon, or the last day of the waning phase, which is new moon or Amavasya. That's it. Purna means full. Purnima, the full moon. Amavasya means it is carrying poison. So there's already some interpretation there. Okay. New moon carries poison. All right? We cannot see the moon when it is new. All right? It's hiding. We're waiting for it to emerge after the second, almost the first or second day after the new moon has arised. Mm -hmm. But it is carrying poison. Ama. It's carrying toxins, actually, not poison. Nisha is poison. Ama means toxins. And it has to be cleansed of that. Mm -hmm. okay. It is not having enough light in, so it's carrying toxins. So there's an interpretation of that. We will get there. Obviously, full moon is better for our mind because if the moon represents our mind, the, moon, the mind is full of light on the full moon. Mm. And the new moon has least light. Mm -hmm. So we say that a full moon is a time which is best to meditate. The mind will be fully enlightened on the full moon. Therefore, all the gurus received enlightenment on a full moon. So when, it, so when people ask you, when your child asks you, your kids ask you, or young people ask you, when is the best time to meditate? Your default answer will be the full moon. That is when you can have the most light to your mind. You will be enlightened. All right? Meditation is in the mind, manas. So you will be enlightened on the full moon. Make sure if you have to select a day that you will make sure your meditation is performed. It's the full moon. All right? Whereas on the new moon, it is not good for receiving enlightenment. What do we use this phase, this, this dark phase, which ends with the new moon, to overcome ignorance? So you do certain tapasya, sadhana, to overcome ignorance. Kali puja is done on amavasya, which is the part time to, to remove the highest ignorance. And Kali is the means to remove the highest ignorance. Okay? Good. All right. So let's see a bit more about what is Titi. Titi depicts the water or Jal element. We've mentioned mm -hmm. that. It shows emotions. Yes, we know. Desires. Okay. Sensitivity. Hmm. Love. Yes, it does. Tastes. What would you like to eat or not eat? Whom you can live with or marry and the amount of water in your body. The last part refers to longevity. Mm -hmm. Your water levels were decided at conception and originated from the Tattva Shunya. Tattva Shunya is that void of elements. Okay? okay. That I mentioned between the three and four loka. So this was all decided at that point. Mm -hmm. And the Titi is indicating what it is and how it can fluctuate with time. Okay. Have you heard some people who say that they get headaches around the full moon or new moon? Yeah. yeah. Be, that is because the water in your body is, a, it, is, is at a certain amount. There's a certain amount of water in your head. Okay. If you have very little water in your head, then when the gravity pull of the moon starts, you will have headaches. Okay. People with a lot of water in their body and in their head area, they will not be affected much by this. Okay. Mercury is the one who tends to dry out the moon. Okay. If the Mercury is in quadrants to the moon, you will see that the person is having issues with, with their mind. They make very rash decisions. They do not think much. They get easily tired or exhausted mentally. This is because Mercury is drawing a lot of, of energy, almost like gravity, from the water of the moon, of the mind, and is putting some. Now, if that Mercury is well-placed, that mental energy is put to good use. Gets, you can get the blessing of, lie, of, of knowledge. Parashara says this can cause Sharada Yoga. Parashara says? Parashara says Mercury in quadrants to moon can cause Sharada Yoga which means a person who will have a lot of good knowledge. Good knowledge. Sharada Yoga. Yes. Sharada Yoga. Mm -hmm. So, Jala Devata is Durga. And worship of her removes all Jala Dosha. Hint. Good emotions come from respecting women. That's the hint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, you want, if you disrespect women, your titi is going to be hurt very badly. Okay. If you have done a sin against women in this life, in your next life, you will have serious tattva dosha. Serious titi doshas. They will, serious problems will be there. Very serious. Okay. okay? So, when, what are we learning about titi? 
It is one of the most impo uh, important aspects of our life. And it is integrally linked to how we respect the mother, the divine mother. And the divine mother is only respected by the way we approach women, specifically women. I'm not saying how women deal with men. I'm talking about how women deal with also other women. Okay. So uh, if I may interrupt all this, you know, many of the women, they gossip against each other and all that. So that's bad karma for them from this point of view. Well, gossip, I dare not say, could be always being a, a, a very bad thing. You know, negative gossip. Negative. If, is, if, you are if you're causing any hurt or sorrow to a lady, yeah. it will affect you in your next life. You know, like okay. women sometimes they bitch about other women and, you know. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So that's, that's a small thing. It could also cause a significant amount of pain in other ways. Okay. Sure. If you break somebody's marriage between a man and a woman, then you are actually hurting the woman more than the man because a woman's security is very much in, in linked to the marriage in many cases. All right. It, it's not always the case, but in many cases it is, especially in more traditional societies. Right. So you are actually go, doing very bad karma towards the lady. So if you break a marriage, you are also hurting this chitti. All right. All right. Think about that. Okay. Now, in this, I'm supposed to speak a little bit about Tara and the story of Soma. And um, this, this is not a very nice story. All right. But we have to learn it. I'm not sure I've spoken about it before. I don't. So, Neil, you'll have to tell me. No. It's good to record. So, um, it, it was such that uh, Soma once had uh, uh, major injuries. Mm -hmm. This happens after Soma, uh, unfortunately. Soma, the moon god. And he went to his teacher, Brihaspati, to be mended and be helped. Brihaspati helped him. Okay. And he, he started the mending process, Brihaspati, the great Jupiter, and left his wife, Tara, to continue the healing process. Mm -hmm. Because she was also learned in this. So Soma was there as a patient being healed by his teacher and his teacher's wife. Now, Brihaspati is a busy man. I mean, he is Indra's priest. He's very busy. Okay? So he had to go. All right? So he had to leave and go somewhere else and do some work. The thing was, Brihaspati, when he was younger, out of his own passion, had raped a woman. All right. The great Brihaspati had done that. Mm -hmm. oh. Yes. In his, in his past, you see, this is where we learn. Every uh, sinner has a future and every saint has a past. Mm -hmm. And because of that karma, he was to see at one point in time that he was going to see the similar suffering as that lady he raped had. Okay. Mm -hmm. Upon himself. Because he has now gone tiki dosha, right? Mm-hmm. Now, Soma looked at this beautiful Tara who was now being mended by him. And he thought, if only she could be mine. Now, Soma has a tendency to think that almost every wife should be his. This is a bit of a problem. Yeah. He already has 27 <laughs> wives. You see? He has 27 nakshatras. They're all his wives. Yeah. Now, I guess after 27, you think, why not one more? Right? Now, so he thought she should be his. Now, at this stage, the stories differ a little bit, possibly because this is not the first time he did this. So we are not really sure when we read the Puranas, which, which Manvantara they're talking about, which age. Because in one age, he kidnaps her. In another story, he, he uh, what we call, Quotes her and she follows him. Yeah. So in one, he takes her forcefully and another, he, he, she comes willingly. Okay. And obviously it could be that if in one age to another, the story changes because just as we are reborn, the devas are also being reborn. All right. So now, so what happens in one version of the story is he forcibly kidnaps her and he rapes her. All right. Now they say the day he thought about doing this, 
was Krishna Triodashi. Oh. And the day he kidnaps her is Krishna Chaturdashi. Okay. Now, Krishna Chaturdashi is the time when this, 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 uh, this, uh, the moon has started to become very dark. It's starting to become invisible, especially the second half. And that is actually the time when the karma, the bad karma was done. We talked about karana last time. And mm -hmm. karana is the actual actions we say, kara, to do something. So the titi is showing your desire and the kara is showing when you will perform that desire. So in the first half of Krishna Chaturdashi, he has not done it yet. The second half, he does it. Okay. All right. You can call it the night of Chaturdashi because it's the second half, the night. First half is the day. Okay. So on that day, he commits this. He kidnaps her. And on the Amavasya, the day after, when the moon is full of toxins, of, of sin, if you will, of sorrow, uh, you could call it also. On that day, he commits the rape. All right? And the reason that this Amavasya is important also from this perspective is, on Amavasya, the lady loses her purity. The lady? Loses her purity. Okay. Okay. This doesn't have to be a negative concept always. When a, a lady has her purity because of her periods, right? That is why she is so pure. Because she is cleansed every month by her own blood cleansing itself. That is a good thing. We should respect that. No, do not talk negatively on that. In fact, when a lady has her period, she's actually becoming like the Divine Mother Durga. She should not do puja because it's demeaning for her to worship the devas when she is Durga. Okay. All right? You see, very respectful time. Beautiful. Because of that, she's very pure. All right? And that is why we always look at the ladies as the fairer sex. They are in, inherently more clean and more pure than us. We know this to be the fact. Every man knows this. In, in her, inherently, we know this. Yeah. Now, when a lady stops having her periods, there's one time when she does that, either in menopause, okay, after menopause, or, during or when she becomes pregnant. That's right. So Amavasya also represents a time when she cannot become pure anymore, which means she's pregnant. So Amavasya doesn't have to be looked at as a very bad time because it implies pregnancy. Okay? So right. Brahmins know this. So they say that if there's a lady in the village born in Amavasya, she will be the Brahmin's wife. And they will tell everybody it's a very bad tithi to be born on. But what does that Brahmin know? This lady will surely have children. Because she's born on Amavasya. <laughs> <laughs> and he will be guaranteed three children with that. Oh. Yes. And most likely sons. Okay. So of course, Brahmins, uh, traditionally, they'll say, Oh, Amavasya, I'm sorry, she cannot be matched with anyone. But out of a favor to the family, I will gladly marry her. <laughs> so, so keep that in mind. She has that ability with on Amavasya by being born on it. But this, but this event of Tara becoming pregnant with Soma's child was happening on Amavasya. Okay. So, what did he do? Soma, the moon, stole Tara. Tara means a nakshatra. And the time when it happened caused a bastard to be born. I don't look at this word as a negative connotation. It's only a term used to say a child born out of wedlock. All right. And this bastard is us who has been separated from our original father, Jupiter Brihaspati. So the moon has stolen us. Mm -hmm. How did he steal us? Look at your moon in your chart. See the nakshatra he's in. The nakshatra he's in is the Tara that Moon has impregnated. Okay? And you have been stolen by the Moon. Meaning that your Moon's nakshatra has become important for your life. And has caused you to be separated from God. Where your original God is Brihaspati, Jupiter. And there is a battle going on between you following what Soma says you should follow. Moon. Moon's nakshatra. Versus... What Jupiter says you should follow, which is Jupiter's next chapter. Mm -hmm. God's next Okay? In Jyotish, we actually depict this as a battle between the Lagna. Jupiter's Karaka for Lagna, you see? Signifies Lagna. All right? And the moon. Whether you're following what the moon says, which, this, which is what the world says you should do, 
which is what, which is the kidnapping basically, where the child is being taken by society. Or whether you're starting to follow your own head and say, no, no, no. Just because society says I should do this doesn't mean I should. I must follow my own path, not what the world says I should. That is the battle between the moon and lagna, and that is nakshatra. And the emotion that has caused that event is the tipi. Okay. Because the bastardization which caused us to be separated from God is the tipi, okay. the emotion. And the nakshatra of the moon is the event of our life and us focusing on those events and that theme of life. That is why people focus so much on the moon's nakshatra because of this event that has caused us to be separated from God. So moon's nakshatra is us being separated from God. And the, the tipi is the emotion that has caused this. All right? Now, Brihaspati eventually got his wife back and found out she was pregnant. But he only got it through the grace of Shiva. So what does this mean? Everybody has to worship Shiva to get that moon's nakshatra to start behaving in our lives. And we will get some power back to our lagna and the lagna nakshatra. And our emotions will be calmed down. So Shiva is the remedy for most of these problems related to Tithi and Nakshatra. Okay. Yes. Okay. Rising above. And with that, he, there was a child. And his, and his name was Buddha. Okay. Buddha Graha. All right. So there's, this is a huge story. And people do different types of Buddha mantras referring to either the names of his biological father or the father who raised him, Brihaspati, or to Para the mother, or to the Graha himself, okay? To overcome our past births, and also to start remembering some of them and dealing with the emotions of it, which has caused this tipi. And finally, to have such memory, which is being blocked by the moon, our memory is blocked by the moon and, in and enforced by Jupiter, so that we can remember everything we learn in this birth, and also in the past birth. And retain this memory till the next life so we can remember this is what we did. And remember all the Jyotish we learned, of course. We like that part, right? Huge concepts that's coming from this. And this is where we start Titi. All right? Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. We're going to take a small break, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, you're going to be watching this part in part two of Titi and relationships. Stay tuned. We're going to come back very soon. Thank you.